Our next caller is Dan from Alberta, Canada. Hey, what's up, Dan? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Um, I'm going to ask you guys, I've got a fitness test and about somewhere going to be between five to seven months. And I've passed it before. This will be my third time doing it. And for it, I've got to be strong and fast. So I'm wondering what's the best way to balance strength and performance when training for competitions, basically. The results have to be competitive. Well, more specific. Yeah. What, we, yeah, what kind of competition are we doing? It's a fitness test for firefighting. So okay. uh, it's like a seven-part fitness test over three hours. Okay. Well, okay, so um, I'm not familiar with the tests that they might that they do in Canada, but I'm somewhat familiar with the ones that they tend to do down here. So I'm assuming they're similar where you're going to be doing, you're going to have to climb over things, carry uh, a heavy bag for some distance, um, you know, that kind of stuff. Is that, does that sound similar? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It's a lot of sudden bursts of uh, movement and then, yeah, some ladder climbs and like you said, dragging heavy weights. Okay. Um, what do you struggle with the most now? Is it the strength? Is it the stamina? Is it the speed? It's definitely the, the, the speed for myself. Um, uh, I've got the endurance down pretty well and the strength as well, but uh, I, I can't do it fast. That's gotcha. my issue. Okay, so here's the deal. And you said you have three to five months. So here's what I'm going to recommend for you. Um, anytime you're training for something specific, and let's say you're you're far out from that competition, like you are three to five months. This training you do now can be more general. The closer you get to your competition, the more specific your training should get. Okay, so in your case, what does that look like? If speed is the issue, I would do explosive style training now. So this is where you can do box jumps, uh, lateral jumps. You might do some snatches or cleans. When you get close to the competition, your best bet is to literally practice the things that they're testing you on. You want to practice those and get good at doing those because a lot of what you're doing is going to be based on skill. I mean, I'm a pretty strong guy, you know, Justin's strong and fast, but if you throw us in a test or, or a competition that we're not familiar with the skill, how are you not going to add we're not me to that conversation? Well. I'm sorry? How are you not going to add me to that conversation? <laughs> I mean, I'm kidding, you know, he's I'm strong, Doug, Justin's strong, yeah, Doug, Adam strong look, and fast. Adam looks strong and fast. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah. what about what about Mav's performance? I mean, I would run performance totally. until probably the last four to six weeks, and then I would get very specific yeah. like what you're saying. Yeah, so. and it actually works perfect because you work on that explosive strength uh, initially. I mean, phase three itself is like completely uh, tailored towards what you're trying to achieve in terms of moving quickly and like getting that fast twitch response. Uh, but then the last one is more geared towards endurance uh, in phase four. But yeah, I would run that pretty much all the way up leading into your competition. Yeah, just Make sure you do the specific stuff, uh, you know, at least three to four weeks skills. beforehand. Well, that's what I would. So if he, he do, knows, do that during your mobility sessions. He knows the test. So it, I would run a MAPS performance program through uh, leading up to the competition. But then all I would do is I would pull out one or two exercises I feel are the least applicable to what I'm trying to do and add in things like drag, bag drags or things or climbing over yeah. a wall specific in your training. But as far as the programming is concerned, that is that layout is pretty perfect for somebody like this. Yeah, it, uh, Dan, do you have access to Maps Performance? I do. Yes, I do have Maps Performance. Perfect. And you know, just you know, more commentary on this. I think, uh, and I, I see this quite a bit. I fell prey to this myself uh, years ago, where people will train for a, sp a specific sport, and they'll want to work out in the gym to train for the attributes that they need. So they'll think to themselves and say, "I need strength." I need power, I need speed, so I'm going to do strength, power, and speed exercises in the gym. And there's nothing necessarily wrong with that, but if you compare that person to somebody that just practices the sport a lot, oftentimes the person practicing just the sport a lot is actually going to perform better because the, the, the skill is so important, the technique is so important. So I can't stress that enough with you, especially the four or five weeks before your competition even if you just practiced, you know, yeah. four days a week, just practice the test 
you know, segments of the test and getting good at that, you're going to get so much carryover to the actual test. Well, that's key. I mean, like, like towards the end, like towards like a, a month, say leading into, you know, your competition, I would really hone in and focus on the skill of it. Uh, but d- laying down the, the foundational, uh, movements and, and strength movements that you want to carry into the competition, like that's going to be the groundwork that you're going to build off of. And that's why I think the program itself kind of lays that out, but then sprinkle in, you know, the days in between with our mobility focused you can work your skills within those days uh, to keep them sharp but still build strength uh, you, you know like in the beginning sweet yeah seems pretty straightforward would you guys put it like that all right awesome cool. thanks for calling Dan thanks, Dan thanks for the opportunity yeah it's a common uh, challenge especially gym rats gym rats who love working out in the gym will and they're like oh I want to get good at this sport but then the sport is like you know 25% of the training that they do and they spend mm. 75% doing stuff in the gym yeah. and then they wonder why their sport performance hasn't improved uh, as much as their gym performance has improved. Yeah, well, I mean, on the other end of that, you also see people trying to emulate those movements in the gym, which I think is hilarious to me. Right, like, yeah. Uh, which is a waste of time. So if you're going to be in the gym, the gym, the tools that are there are, are there best used for strength. And yes. So that's why we want to use that for strength and then we want to use skill uh, you know, adjacent to that. I feel like there's like a common theme in these questions right now. It's yeah. like everybody's asking these sport or competition type specific uh, training and it's like you need to just whatever that is whether it be rock climbing or whether it be for getting ready for a firefighter test you the stuff that you need to do for both those things is what you should be doing 80 percent of the time mm-hmm. and then the rest of the time you're putting the work in to build strength leading up to all that yeah i i again i know i, t- I go uh, already referred to you know things i've learned when i did you know judo and jiu-jitsu but i remember trying to build stamina and i was talking to a very high level competitor and he's like, well, you know, I'm like, man, I need to build more stamina. He's like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm doing these like circuits in the gym with kettlebells, this and that. And he goes, why don't you just do more jujitsu? Yeah. I was like, oh. Yeah, I mean, like a light bulb, <laughs> obviously, and that's what I did. And I got way better, way faster. Well, it's like totally. the, I think we've talked about this on the show before. There's there's some carryover to that, right? Doing those yes. circuits, you're going to build a little bit more of a gas tank, and it, sure, it, it can't help, but nothing will help more than just getting really good at rolling for longer. It's just like if you took somebody who is a badass swimmer, and all of a sudden you had to compete against somebody who's a cyclist, and they're always cycling all the time. Even if you're a good long distance swimmer, it, your chances of beating the guy who's always cycling all the time, even though both of them require cardiovascular endurance they're different dude if your your skill is so important it'll make you use less energy and exert yourself less because you're more technical if okay if, if you've ever <laughs> and i know you both have experiences if you've ever gone to work with uh people who are you know do hard like physical labor go work go to a construction yard yeah, yeah mix it, cement yeah be a badass in the gym you work out you lift weight a crossfit champion or whatever Go do roof, you know, put up, put roofs up for all day long with a bunch of dudes in the sun. And the dude with the pot belly who's eating the hot pocket for lunch yeah. is going to, he's going to bury he's you, gonna crush you. He's going to crush you. So it's, there's so much uh, skill is so important with the, with the sport that you're involved in that getting better at the skills got way more pay, uh, payback than, you know, building general strength. Well.